Hello everyone, and welcome to session number six now, man, time is flying, of evolution and paleobiology. I'm recording this from a, a grey and fairly dreary autumnal afternoon in Manchester, but I hope that the, uh, the exciting content that we've got for you, which is going to be looking at evolution at the grand scale, will help make up for any uh, grey dullness where you are, and certainly will help make this afternoon more interesting for me as well. Macroevolution itself is a really broad topic, so I've I've kind of um, tried to narrow it down by just picking up a, a few bits and pieces, a few concepts that I think are really, really interesting, and I've distilled them into this lecture for you, so you can understand some key questions and some key processes that occur in macroevolution. In brief, what I'm going to be covering today is first adaptation. So adaptation is the thing that drives evolution at both a small and a large scale. We've not covered it yet in this course, so I want to quickly introduce it. That's the contents of the first video. Um, so then I'll be focusing on macroevolution. I'll define what that is for you, but again, I, as I mentioned, it's basically evolution at a large scale. Rob has covered speciation in video number two for you, so that's not included here, but I suppose that could be seen as the bridge between micro and macro evolution, if indeed those are um, appropriate terms to use at all. We'll get onto that into, in the next, no, in the second video um, of today. So the concepts that I've picked out for you, or the things that I'm going to be covering, are some key interesting concepts that I wanted to introduce you to. And then I'm going to look at molecular clocks. So these are ways that we can look at um, how evolution occurs in deep time. I'll explain exactly how when we get to that video. That obviously, um, if we're looking at uh, evolution deep time, we can use that to work out rates of evolution. So I'll, I'll cover some topics in the rate of evolution. And then I will look at some very special events, some things called adaptive radiations, which we think are quite important towards modern species diversity. That will take us to four videos today. And I'm, I'm switching up how I'm doing uh, this course for this lecture, at least. Um, and that is based on the um, well, some feedback that we've had from the Staff Student Liaison Committee relatively recently in the School of Earth and Environmental Sciences. And in fact, one of the uh, key messages that we got from, from that was that actually um, we're all teaching things we're really excited about. And that means that there's this predilection towards putting quite a lot of content into these videos. And that means that um, all of you are having to watch an awful lot of videos before your synchronous Zoom sessions. So I... I um, thought that was really useful to know. Thank you for those of you that have been feeding back into that system. And certainly I, um, I think it's really important to listen to this kind of feedback. And so what I've decided to try for this particular lecture is to finish our last section that would have previously been a video um, in our Zoom uh, session that's associated with this course, and then have our synchronous activities, the ones that we do in person, kind of surround both some elements of what we've had so far in the videos, but focusing primarily on the um, bits that we're actually doing in that Zoom session. So we'll have some elements of discussion as part of that last um, chunk of, of video content. Obviously not a video, because I'm um, delivering it via Zoom. So the overall effect will mean that you have slightly um, fewer videos to watch. Um, we have less time to discuss things in Zoom, and I suppose they will be more didactic, more me telling you things. But I will endeavor to make sure that we still have the opportunity to discuss in that Zoom session. And overall, it means that the, the time uh, footprint for this unit will be slightly smaller for you. So I hope that is a change which you will at least uh, see why I'm doing it and I would greatly appreciate if you have any feedback if you could um, place it in a form that I'm going to put on the bottom of the website below this video if you scroll all the way down to bonus stuff if you have anything you would like me to um, take home about how I've chosen to do this lecture if you think it's lecture this series of videos if you think this change is better or if you think this change is worse I would really appreciate knowing and also to kind of speed up the, the process of these websites, I've chosen not to put any quizzes in this particular website. Again, if you think that's good or if you think that's bad, I would really like to know. So that form below um, is the place you can feed this back completely anonymously. I won't know who you are, but I would greatly appreciate your thoughts if you have any on this slight shift in how I'm doing things. 
and I will uh, I will take that feedback and then either continue in this vein or switch back to what I was doing before based on the uh, general consensus that I get. I, I'll probably um, at least leave this this particular um, approach for one more uh, one more set of videos to see how it sinks kind of settles down. So slight change, but I hope that. Um, that makes sense and I, I welcome hearing from you what you think and with that I will say that's it for this introductory video and I look forward to seeing you in video number one.